Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, September 13th, 2023. Let's get into it. Let's just start with the great story, the biggest story of, of the day, for me anyway. Clearly unconstitutional order from the government. Take a listen. I have a fact for you. Criminals do not follow the law or a public health order. Is there a realistic way to enforce this order? Uh, no, there is not because uh, we'll cut that conversation off because it's unconstitutional. So there's no way we could enforce that order. That even during an interview over on CNN, the governor was grilled by the host who questioned her on where exactly the supposed the authority came from to negate the rights the of Americans. Times. Take a look. Because those are kids. They're kids who shouldn't be shot. It's but disgusting. we also have, Governor, the uh, Constitution of, the, of New Mexico and the Constitution of the United States, and you're an attorney. Do you think you're on solid constitutional ground here? Well, um, we're going to see. I mean, look, I wouldn't do it if I didn't think I had the right. I have the right. Where is the right? Where is the in right? In the state of New Mexico. Public health, it's a suspension. It's not a ban. And we'll see what all of these court actions do. And I did say publicly, Poppy, yeah. look, I got a Supreme Court that says my uh, personal bodily autonomy can be restricted. And yet NRA and other uh, issues on the Second Amendment keeps getting broadened. So the Bruin case in New York, right, yeah. that... Uh, deals with concealed carry uh, right. and uh, te cases and, in Texas. And that's that actually, you Governor, what I'm talking uh, about. You bring up the Bruin case. Uh, the Supreme I don't Court know last this year. Let, let me just ask you this because the Supreme Court last yeah, year sure. totally so changed CNN. what we're allowed to do, what you're allowed <laughs> to do. And they said, unless you can base the it in the history and tradition, and you don't have grounds to do something like this. The New Mexico Constitution, I looked last night, Article 2, Section 6, yeah, says yeah. this, quote, No law shall abridge the right of citizens to keep and bear arms for security and defense. No municipality or county shall regulate in any way any incident of the right to keep and bear arms. Are you not in violation of both the U.S. Constitution and your state's Constitution? I don't believe that we are, and if that narrow reading of the Constitution, which has been tested in the state, we wouldn't have universal background checks, we wouldn't have a waiting period, we wouldn't have a red flag law, we wouldn't have uh, prohibitions for straw purchases, none of those would have been deemed constitutional, and today all of them are. So that's New Mexico. By the way, is is if anybody from New Mexico is watching this video, why the hell did you elect this woman? <laughs> it just Democrat. She's a Democrat. I, is there a single Democrat that's that in office that you can? I I, I can't. I, I tell you what. I I but whew, uh, don't get me started. All right, so that's it on that story. You can watch, uh, listen to right wing television, and uh, they they're all talking about it. Uh, I can't imagine that what's in her brain, but, you know, like I said, I, just like in Maui, just like in Hawaii, they like the Democrats, and elections have consequences, and uh, today on Todd Stearns, there was a guy he called in, he says, I haven't voted in a single election, but yet I don't like where the country's going. Well, you haven't voted, and then he said, well, I, I, if I do register, I'll vote for Trump, and what? If you do register, you're going to vote for Trump. Dude, man, I mean, it was just it was just like, are you kidding me? Do you understand that you're not in control of your own destiny? The FBI can come in and take everything you got. Elections have consequences. On this solemn day to renew our sacred vow, never forget, never forget, we never forget. Each of us, each of those precious lives stolen too soon when evil attacked. Crown Zero in New York, and I remember standing there the next day and looking at the building. I felt like I was looking through the gates of hell. It looked so devastating because of the way you could, away from where you could stand. All right, so let's just get into the video. Boy, I tell you, there's a lot to cover in this damn video. I hope you can stay tuned through it all. Uh, so we'll start with the first clip here. This is uh, no, this is Lavrov, and he's talking about how delaying talks will make a more difficult negotiation in the long run. Let's watch that clip. 
те, кто направляет этот режим, решили, что украинцы должны быть готовы к переговорам, но, наверное, первым шагом должно стать пожелание или приказ отменить этот декрет, который, повторю еще раз, переговоры запрещают. Насчет нашей позиции, насчет его заявления о том, что Россия не выказывает никакой готовности, никакого желания к переговорам, ну, тоже обидно. Я понимаю, что госсекретарь человек занятой, но какие-то эксперты у него есть, которые, наверное, регистрируют и анализируют то, что говорит российское руководство. Президент Путин многократно говорил, что мы не уходим от переговоров. Но те, кто уходит от переговоров, должны понимать, что чем дольше они тянут, тем сложнее будет потом договариваться. So that was pretty cool. And then, uh, then we'll get into the next clip. And, uh, you know, you have to understand that we are now a banana republic here in the United States. It's ridiculous what's going on. What we've done to the January 6th uh, uh, prisoners, uh, political prisoners now, and what we've done to our the, the leading political candidate against uh, the Democrat Party, uh, President Trump, uh, has been appalling. And it's being seen all around the world. And what they don't understand is how they are alienating the entire world. The West, the Western nations and the United States have basically turned, I mean, 85% of the world is turning away from us because of what we're doing. And what do you think that Putin's going to do? He's going to take advantage of it. Let's listen to Putin on the Trump prosecution. Не Трампа, но это, конечно, для нас то, что происходит в сегодняшних условиях, на мой взгляд, это хорошо. Почему? Потому что это показывает всю гнилость американской политической системы, которая не может претендовать на то, чтобы учить других демократии. Все, что происходит с Трампом, это преследование по политическим мотивам своего политического значит, конкурента. Вот что это такое. И делается это на глазах общественности США и всего мира. Они просто обнажили свои проблемы внутренние. И в этом смысле, если они пытаются с нами там в чем-то бороться, хорошо. Потому что это показывает, кто с нами борется. Показывает, как еще в советское времена говорили, значит, звериный облик американского империализма. Да. Звериный оскал. Wasn't that interesting? <laughs> oh my God. So don't tell me that Putin is not say, you know, basically you, sometimes you have to just beat these uh, leaders around the world. Let's say Erdogan in Turkey or Iran or, or Saudi Arabia. Do you think that they watch that clip on Putin and don't think, yeah, yeah, the United States is totally out of control. They're no longer a, 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 a bastone of democracy. They, They're a communist, Marxist, you know, totalitarian, totalitarian nation, which is what we are. So let's just keep going. Oh, yeah, we got to watch this. So if you didn't know, I mean, uh, it's been in the news. Uh, I know that you might not have time to follow everything. But Kim Jong-un, he's now got uh, uh, ICBMs provided to him by Russia. I think I talked about that in a previous video. So they can now strike the United States. Now, I don't know if he's been given the launch codes for those. Maybe Russia's probably holding on to those launch codes. But he's in Russia now. And uh, what was really cool is he's a train dude. And, you know, one of the things before I broke my neck that I always wanted to do is I wanted to ride that train across Canada before it became a communist nation. I wanted it because it's supposed to be an amazing tour. You ride the train all the way across Canada and uh, and just see all kinds of stuff. Well, that's how Kim Jong-un uh, went to see Putin as he rode all, I mean, Russia's a big, big, I mean, you think the United States is big? No, 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 the Russian Federation is, is humongous. And so Kim Jong-un, he just said, well, I want to take a train ride all the way through Siberia and the whole country. And he, he can you imagine? It was probably quite beautiful. And I think that does speak a little bit. Everybody wants to say he's insane. I don't think so. I would want to take that train ride. And I would have loved to have been with him uh, just, to, just to ride along, just to see all the scenery. It probably was very uh, therapeutic, very uh, harmonizing. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a back to nature type of person. I'm a hiker. I always encourage you to go out and hike with nature. It'll get your head back on straight. But let's watch him arriving in Russia.
those red carpets. <laughs> oh my God. And so Russia's paying him an incredible amount of respect. So what, you know, when we talk about Putin, well, let's, let's, let's get one more clip on uh, Putin. He's, uh, he went on about how the West is destroying the global economic system. And that's for sure. I mean, if you look at what, you know, we're doing with spending just tons and tons of money, or we, we can't even hardly, well, right now, the, uh, the, the, the debt is actually the equivalent of our defense budget. So the interest on our debt is now the same that we're paying. Now, do you think this is sustainable? I don't think so. But here's Putin's comment on how the West is destroying our, our Western economic system. Годы изменилась и продолжает меняться глобальная экономика, в том числе из-за того, что некоторые страны, прежде всего западные, конечно, своими же руками разрушают систему финансовых, торговых, хозяйственных отношений, которые сами же и создавали во многом. На этом фоне в мире расширяется пространство подлинного делового сотрудничества. Государств, которые не подчиняются какому бы то ни было внешнему давлению, а следует собственным национальным интересам. И таких государств становится все больше и больше, причем в разных регионах мира. Они ставят во главу угла своей деятельности, своей политики не какие-то конъюнктурные текущие политические моменты, а продвижение своих собственных проектов. Проектов, которые могут и несут прямую, долгосрочную выгоду народам этих стран. По сути, рождается новая модель взаимоотношений, интеграции, но уже не по западным лекалам, для избранных, для избранного золотого миллиарда, а для всего человечества, для всего функционирующего и развивающегося многополярного мира. Now, wasn't that interesting coming from Putin? So, uh, now in previous videos I've talked about how the war is going... I call it parallel, but I, I call it the, the, it's a parallel war. And uh, so let's take a little bit of look at uh, what's going on in Niger, because uh, Macron is saying that the French forces are not going to withdraw, even though um, the uh, Nigerians want them to withdraw. Let's watch that clip. We do not recognize the legitimacy of the Putschist declarations, since President Bazoum has not relinquished power. And so, if we redeploy, we would only do so at President Bazoum's request and in coordination with him, not with officials who today are taking the president hostage. Well, it doesn't look like the people of Niger will be allowed to the government that they want or even the government that they're fighting for. This, as we've seen, a report suggesting that France is amassing troops and we're happens to reinstate their own preferred government in Niger. We'd also remember that the Sahel state is also in Royal in a standoff with the West African bloc, ECOWAS. As we speak, it said that Nigerians are preparing for war against um, regional countries, are threatening to invade. And this is coming, of course, weeks after mutinous um, sh uh, sh soldiers ousted the nation's democratically elected uh, president. We also know that um, residents in the capital of Niamey are calling for the mass recruitment of volunteers to assist the country, or rather the army, in the face of growing threat by by ECOWAS, which it says will use a military force um, if the coup government does not reinstate the deposed president. There is a statement issued by Niger's military government on that. La France, continue. France continues to deploy its forces in several ECOWAS countries while preparing a joint aggression against Niger in cooperation with the West African bloc. I must say all tens of thousands of people and protesters gathered outside a French military base in Niger's capital on Miami for more than a week um, demanding and calling on troops to leave in the wake of a military coup that has widespread support from the demonstrations that we've been all seeing. Protesters um, slit the throat of a goat dressed in French colors and carried coffins draped in French flags and others carrying signs calling for France to leave the country. So there you go. Now, uh, the uh, we've got other crazy news going on <laughs> and so um well let's look at we got naval war games that may be taking place in the baltic sea now that would be like russia and china conducting war games right off the coast of miami uh down here in florida now they're going to be in international waters but uh just think about the provocation 
So it seems like the Biden administration, uh, and I ain't calling it that because it's obviously not Biden that's, that's running things. Uh, probably a couple oligarchs that are running things. Uh, probably Soros, <laughs> that Satanist uh, evil person. But uh, he's he's probably up there pulling the strings, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna poke the nose, we're gonna poke the bear one more time and run a, a naval war game. Looks like I, I I don't have verification. I've just heard people talking about it. Uh, as you know, we are in a banking crisis, a real estate crisis, a commercial real estate crisis. Uh, it just hasn't hit full force yet. I uh, hope you're preparing for it. And, uh, and then, there, of course, there was a, a video by the Duran on German deindustrialization. So let's look at what Germany's done for just one second. Uh, they, the, the Green Party, they nuked their nuclear industry uh, for whatever reason. I mean, nuclear energy is one of the cleanest forms of, of energy other than the spent uh, nuclear waste, uh, which we haven't really come up with a great solution for, but I, I think that in the future, we're going to come up with a way to dispose of that properly uh, as long as it's stored. And uh, and they they basically, now the numbers, as of, what, six months ago or so, they had 6.06% growth. <laughs> so anyway, Germany's in a world of hurt. They're in a recession now. They've got no hope of getting cheap Russian energy. Uh, their industry is failing and they did it all to themselves. They voted for it. That's why I tell you, your vote matters. They all wanted the Green Party in charge. Uh, maybe not East Germany, but, you know. And so Germany, you know, blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. The United States did. Didn't say a damn thing. All the, so they've got no energy. They've got no nuclear power. I, they're just going to be in a world of hurt. I mean, that, this has all happened in a year. It took Britain... 10 years to, uh, to, to basically the, the Britain empire, you know, just is nothing, no more. What does Britain manufacture these days? Nothing. Just like the United States here soon. And who just thinks it's abominable when a superpower with all this military might, with no provocation, attacks a, a, a country that is, uh, you know, like, like, you know, Iraq, I'm uh, sorry, Afghan, I'm, I'm sorry, Viet, <laughs> Korea, no, sorry, Ukraine. Uh, terrible. So we'll finish with, a, I'm sure this will get copyright uh, violated, but uh, this is a song that's going around in Russia, because I always like to finish with some Russian hardware, and I... Uh, I, by the way, if you got kids, you cut the video off right here. There's a lot of foul language. Now it's just printed on the screen, and it's all in Russian, so they can't really hear it. Uh, but uh, you might not want them, if they can read uh, cuss words, you might not want them watching this video. Peace out. Stay free. Позову артиллерии, готовимся к бою И пролетают Белла над нами Мы наступаем РФ войсками Чебаши, фанаты Чебаши Ракетами и танками с пехотой Наши Чебаши, по фашистам Чебаши Навечно заполните слово Раша Чебаши
мы живые, ну а пока автомат сжимая, бьем мы врага не переставая. Uh, one thing I forgot is the new COVID shot is out. Uh, it's been approved by the FDA from 12 years old to uh, to whatever, 80, 90, whatever. And uh, so be sure and get your jab to the jab to the jab to the jab, the booster to your booster to your booster, especially if you're a Democrat. Especially if you're a Democrat, make sure you put that mask on. Nope, to put double masks on. Put a face plate over your head. You know, wear a, a head cover, uh, maybe an NBC suit, and get the booster to your booster to your booster, especially if you're a Democrat. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.